Welcome to another episode on how LoRa works with Shelly, where we discuss how to use LoRa to communicate between Shelly devices that are outside Wi-Fi range. Previously, I have done a basics video and I've also done a setup video where we have uh, managed to set up the LoRa module on the Shelly, the, uh, the one Gen 4 and the 2PM Gen 4, that's what I use for testing. And also uh, we have done a simple communication where we send some text messages just to establish that the communication between the two devices are working. So in this video, we are going to use our first example where I'm going to create, as you can see here, I've already done the configuration, where I'm going to create a virtual button uh, that uh, is available in my Shelly app. And if I push that button, then it's going to send a LoRa message into the 2 p.m., which let's say is outside far at the end of the garden where my gate is. And it's going to send a short pulse out uh, for let's say a gate motor to open the gates. So you should be able to use this to, you know, open the gate uh, or a door or something like, uh, you know, far away, which is outside the Wi-Fi range. And uh, you can use it in the Shelly app. And if you really want to use this uh, to open your gate, then you can use this button to push in your Android Auto or the CarPlay interface. So let's see how we are going to do this because we need a couple of different components in order to make this work. So first, what you're going to see is we are going to create a virtual button I decided that uh, in this example, I'm going to use the virtual button. Uh, so that's not going to be a physical button, let's say the button on the uh, on the Shelly one, but the virtual button. So you will only be able to operate this from your phone. And that again, this information is going to go into the uh, Shelly one because that's where the virtual button is configured. And then it's going to capture this information that the button is pressed. It's going to send a message over the another device to LoRa and that message is going to be received and that's going to trigger the output. So let me just show you how it works in uh, this split screen. So you can see my interface here and you can see the Shelly one, uh, sorry, the 2 p.m. And we are going to operate the first output, which is going to be this LED. So I press this button and the communication is going to take some time and you will see that this output is going to flash for one second. And that's it. So that's how the whole thing worked. So now let's assume that again, this is connected to a gate. No, now the gate opens. Okay, so let me go through all the different components and then show you how it works. So the first, I think we are going to go into the Shelly one and we are going to set up all the uh, necessary, well, first of all, the virtual components. So here uh, you can do most of this configuration in the mobile app as well, but I'm going to show you the web uh, interface. So first you go into uh, the components and we are going to create a new component. So a new component, this is going to be a button type and that's going to be the screen that you get. And then you just provide a name and this should be viewed as a button. And you can put like an icon here. I, so I haven't put any icons, so it just uses that basically square that you're going to see uh, later on. And one very important thing is that whenever you are creating any virtual components, then it would be assigned the ID. So here the ID is button colon 200. And that's going to be important because uh, when you press this button and the event is triggered, it's going to use that component ID that we also need to validate. Because let's assume that we have multiple virtual components. We need to know which one got pressed or selected or you know switched. We really only need the virtual component, but for the UI perspective, I also want to create a virtual group or a user defined group. So again, you just pl uh, click on the plus button here. And when you create your virtual group, you have the option to select which uh, virtual components are going to be in this uh, group. And now we go back. And then when you go, when you go back to the home screen, you would immediately see this, uh, the group and also the, the device in your, well, in the home screen of this web interface, because unfortunately it doesn't show up on the phone. But at least the good thing about uh, the phone interface is again, if you select the Gen 4, it just, uh, you know, shows the, the, you know, the physical output of that button. And when you go into the virtual components, you can see the, the group, the component and the group that got created. But here, when you click on this, um, 
uh, you know button the you know the settings icon you have this option to say extract virtual group as a device and as you can see you can only extract one group um, um, as a virtual device or if you have if you create a very complicated scenario where we would create multiple groups then you can you know you need to be a premium member in order to do that so i made i made my um group i just called it laura but again if you are controlling stuff in the garden gates you know like an outhouse something maybe you can just call it garden and all your virtual components are going to be under the uh, name garden and then once you have done that and you go back to your list of devices you can see that there is a new uh, device here which is called the LoRa and if I go into that then I have the virtual button which is uh, which is called the gate so if I press this button on the phone it does the same thing what we, which I have just done by pressing the button here on the on the screen itself so that's the whole thing about you know groups and stuff uh, it's more controlling the VUI and the fact that you can uh, export it as a virtual device so it just shows up in your list of devices in the app and of course since it shows up in the uh, in the app you can put it onto your dashboard the only thing is that you know the the, the group itself uh, appears in the dashboard so it will have one button for one of the devices and you have to click on that in order to get to more multiple devices in that group so but that's how the mobile application works so and now we have done the all the setup of the virtual component now we can go into scripting because uh, just like before everything is going to happen in scripting with this script I, keep, I try to keep almost everything from the previous script and I just try to add on to it so if you remember uh, the or if you have seen the previous uh, episode then we had a um, this script which had there is a send message script and at the end of the script there was uh, just a call to this function you know send message test or head over that's what we have done previously so I deleted that and I have added an event call an event handler so this event handler is going to handle all the different events that are happening on this uh, Shelly 1 Gen 4 and I mean these events can be things like the button on the Shelly got pressed or the relay got triggered by another event or by the app but also the virtual components that we have created on this device got pressed as well so whenever the um, this event comes back we get an event uh, object and it would have an info property and in that info property we are going to see a couple of things so for example the event type is going to be single push because that button got pushed and then the component is going to uh, be button 200 so again if you remember what i said in the component it has an id which is button colon 200 and that's what it means here so that is um, so we will so we will check whether the you know the event type is an object and if the uh, or sorry yeah the event is an object and then that the event um, dot event is a single push and the event.component is a button colon 200 and again the reason I did this with this if because once we start adding more functions with more virtual components or physical components then we can just uh, you know put more of these if statements and validations and this is how you can just layer multiple functions with into the same script and as we go on you will see that I'm going to keep this one and I will just keep adding more functions or more you know piece of code here so if this happens then we send a message uh, to AO and we send a message.log that a gate opening message sent so why we are sending this AO um, in the lower communication basically we are just sending a a piece of text like numbers or letters or whatever and um, so we we are not really you know specifying that what needs to happen on the other side we just send a message and we we need to handle that message on the other side so I thought what I what we can do is um, because this is the first uh, you know function that we want to implement uh, the 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 message is related to this first, fu first function is going to start with a and then the second letter let's say o i that's for on so you know the basically the a function needs to turn on and we are going to handle how it should be um, you know interpreted on the other side and um, so you know once we start doing other functions we can just start sending those messages starting b c d e and so on so this is just going to send a message ao to the other side so let's implement the shelly 2pm as well and 
the only other you know small changes I have done here is I have clicked on the first output and here on the um, timers I set the auto off to one second again most gates they only need a short pulse to either open or close so I when I you know open this output I want it to automatically close I don't want to send a separate close command so I just configure this auto off um, and now we can go into the script and I call this one as a lower virtual button receive. And here again, the, the first part of the script is exactly the same as what we had seen before. Um, you know, if you remember, we had an event handler and that event handler specifically looking for all the LoRa specific events. And, um, and we had this uh, piece, uh, the, like these two messages that prints the message into the console and also prints the RSSI and the SNR. So this is where we were yesterday. And I added this uh, four lines of, well, basically three lines of code, which says if the decrypted message equals AO, uh, then we are going to do a Shelly call, which is just says uh, switch set and the ID zero and the on is true. So we are going to set the first output so that's the first relay of the 2 p.m. and we are going to set it to on and that's it. And this script is already running and I can just clear the console and I can clear the console here as well. And now I'm going to push the button on the phone. So you're not going to see that, but I just want to make sure that we see the, the things that are happening in the console log. So I'm pushing the button. So on the sender side, we have a message which says gate opening message sent. And on the, on the receiver side, we just got this log that uh, the RSSI got, that was minus 55 and the signal to noise ratio is, not, uh, is nine. I'm not really sure if it came through the phone, uh, sorry, the microphone phone but actually the relay got triggered so let me show you uh, again with a different setup let's do this one okay I turn off the light so we can see a little bit better so uh, you're watching this LED so I'm pushing it and the LED comes on and it goes off so that was all the communication the relay got triggered it has nothing to do with uh, Wi-Fi it was all done with LoRa and we were able to operate the gate motor and this pretty much concludes this setup. So we were able to set a virtual component on a sender device, which responds that even that virtual component is pressed, that generates a LoRa message. And on the receiver side, we capture that LoRa message and we initiate one of the outputs to turn on a device. In this case, we are going to turn on a gate motor. Just like in the previous video, all the necessary information that I shared in this video, for example, the scripts are going to be available on a web page. You will find the link to that page in the video description. But I think that's going to be it for today and hopefully see you on the next uh, Shelly Laura adventure.